This is it. The end of the over two years of programming Minecraft for web browsers is finally here. And I can say with full confidence that with the help of those who have been involved since the very start, I have made a very basic Minecraft for the web. It includes a title menu, random and infinite terrain generation, trees, water, different blocks, placing blocks, breaking blocks, biomes, hotbar, saving and loading worlds, and so much more. Now it may come a surprise to you that this series is ending, but why on earth did I even start to make it? Well, you see, I'm definitely not the first to make Minecraft for the web browser. There have been several YouTubers, developers, and hobbyists who have made better versions of Minecraft spin-offs than the one that I've made, and they made it in way less time. The main idea behind creating this over 20 episode series of programming Minecraft was not to make a game so much like the original, but instead to teach those who want to learn game development on the web. And it came out to be super successful. Not only was I the first ever to create a series of tutorials on how to program Minecraft from scratch, but this series got itself pretty good engagements and views. With that said, if you'd like to learn 3D game development in the web browser, feel free to start watching this series. You'll get a fundamental understanding of 3.js, JavaScript notation, syntax and concepts, object-oriented programming, game development, server hosting, and so much more. You'll also be part of the GitHub community for the people who are interested in this series as well. And come on, who doesn't want to make Minecraft from scratch? Also, the cool part is that I had never done this before. So as you go along in the series, you'll see me develop my understanding of 3D game development. Additionally, after uploading over 20 episodes of the same topic, I could definitely see a change in the quality of the tutorials, which was really nice. Some of the main concepts that you learn if you go through the series are number one, 3D Terran generation with Perlin noise. Now, I do have a video on this topic and programming a randomly generated world. So the main idea in a Minecraft-like world generation is that you have a plane of blocks and to create a more bumpy terrain rather than flat, you basically vary the heights of the blocks in the z-axis. But if this process is done randomly, it will look something like this on the left. And this makes sense because the z components of each block is totally random. To overcome this, a famous algorithm called Perlin noise is used. This algorithm allows the variation in the heights to be totally random as well, but have a smooth change to the neighboring block's height. This variation can be very easily changed to represent different biomes such as plains, hills, and even mountainous biomes. Number two, 3D character movement and collision. This is really important in 3D games. The movement is relatively easy. However, the collision detection with all the elements of the world is quite difficult to code sometimes. For example, if your player is walking on the ground, you'll need to check this or else your player will just keep falling and the same goes for upwards and to the side directions. Number three, ray casting. Now don't get confused with ray tracing. It's used for something else, but it's quite similar. Ray casting is where you cast a ray or a line from a certain point and towards a certain direction. So it's basically a vector. This is incredibly useful in games such as Minecraft because you can trace a ray from the character's viewpoint towards the direction he's facing and point out all the objects he is directly looking at. This is very practical when you want to code the functionalities of breaking or placing blocks. Number four, infinite terrain generation. This is definitely one of the features which was the hardest to code in the project. Not only do you have to regenerate the terrain that the player left once he comes back to it, but you also have to consider the broken blocks or any placed blocks. If you're curious where to find the code for this series and project, you can do so in the GitHub repository posted in the descriptions of all the videos in the series, and this one of course. And do note that any resources used are also referenced in the descriptions. Also, the GPU and CPU of your computer really makes a difference to the performance of the game. I used to run the code on a MacBook Air 2015, where the FPS was reaching below 25. Later, I switched to the newer MacBook Air M1 2020, and in most cases, it consistently stayed at 60 FPS, which was the highest possible. So if you do really want to start developing games on the web, this series might just be the perfect start for you. You learn so much, you'll write thousands of lines of code. At the end, I programmed the functionality to save and load worlds, like in regular Minecraft. However, this was the only functionality in the game which I didn't make a tutorial on. And the reason why is because if you do finish the series, you'll be able to add your own functionalities into the game because you'll be so familiar with the code. On further notice, for this Halloween, I'm going to be designing a very special project involving the Raspberry Pi, computer-aided design, 
3D printing and even, here's a small hint, a voice changer. And yes, there will be a video for that as well. Thanks to everyone who supported me throughout the series and stay tuned. See you next time.